Okay, today we're going to talk about geologic time and relative age dating. And I really just mean dating rocks, not relatives. So, literally we're talking about the fact that these rocks down here are older than these rocks. <clears throat> That's superposition um, and so forth. So, we're not applying years to things, but we're talking about things in terms of relative time. So, eons. There's divisions of geologic time, and just briefly talk about the four major divisions of geologic time that you should be familiar with. First is eons. These are the longest. These indicate major changes on the Earth. For instance, the Hadean, which is down here, was when the Earth was actually molten, and so on and so forth. The Earth is now solid here at the, at the Archean, and in the Proterozoic, we get the development of the, the beginning of the development of more complex life. That era, the Precambrian time, which really contains the Hadean, Archean, and Proterozoic eras, or eons rather, then gives way when the Phanerozoic eon starts with the Cambrian explosion and so forth. And then we talk about eras more than we talk about eons. Eras are major changes in life on Earth. So you have the end of the first, the Paleozoic era comes at the, with the Permo Triassic extinction the end of the Mesozoic era, the area with which the dinosaurs lived, with the KT or Cretaceous tertiary extinction. So, and in between, in, within eras, you have smaller things called periods. And I just give you a few here just to talk about some of the, you can just read these yourselves. But periods generally have, are, are divided based upon big trends in life, change, big trend changes in life yeah. during particular eras of time. Um, down, and then we can t further break down periods into what we call epics. And then we can go to stages and ages and so on and so forth. But these are the four divisions of geologic time. Big, the big thing to know is that eons are the biggest, eras are the next biggest, followed by periods and then epics. Okay, so now that we have that down, this is the geologic time scale, of course, and I'll give you a copy of that for you to memorize. Not that complicated. Here's a better, here's another way of looking at geologic time. Um, you might want to pause here if you want to read all this, but the cool thing is that it shows you all the different major periods of time. These are eons here, um, followed by pe followed by periods within the eras. So the eras, the period era, and so the eon era period thing isn't really followed, but um, you can get a good idea of the fact that you know the Quaternary period is a tiny, tiny little speck of Earth history versus you know any of these other areas. So it's just another way to or order geologic time. <clears throat> All right, now specifically, mm -hmm. let's move on to relative age dating. We'll come back to more of the history of life stuff in another presentation. Talk about which fossils came from where, which or you know how organisms evolved and so forth. But for right now, let's talk about how we date rocks <coughs> in a relative sense. So we start out with unconformities. Unconformities are places where the rock is actually missing. Places where between two layers of rock, you had a period of erosion. There are three types of unconformities. Okay, um, there are, of course, the easiest ones to identify are the angular unconformities. These are like this this line here separating the Tonto group from the Grand Canyon supergroup rocks. These are tilted. These Tonto group rocks are flat. This erosional boundary between them that is an unconformity. It's an angular unconformity. Now, between these Vish, the Vishnu schists down here, the Vishnu basic, basic, uh, basic rocks, <clears throat> and the Tonto group is a non-conformity. And that's called that because these are igneous, these are metamorphic, but if they were igneous, it would be the same thing. Um, and these are sedimentary, so completely different rock types above and, above and below. That is a non-conformity. Those rock types do not conform with one another. If these are both sedimentary, like they are up here, we call it a disconformity. <clears throat> this is the most minor kind of nonconformity, because or unconformity, because these are both flat-lying sedimentary rocks above and below it, and so it's sometimes really hard to hard to find actually. On a more basic level, though, it's just important to know that the law of superposition is a law made up by, or in, you know discovered by Nicholas Steno, who you learned about in a previous presentation. That in, that where it said that older rocks lie beneath younger rocks. Makes sense. Older rocks have to have been deposited before younger rocks can then get deposited. 
Moving on here, the law of inclusions. <clears throat> Just another important principle for you to understand. So here we have three rock layers, a sandstone, a basalt lava flow, and a rhyolite lava flow. This is the youngest layer, this is the oldest layer, the sandstone. Notice how each subsequent layer, like the basalt lava flow, contains pieces of the sandstone. And likewise, the rhyolite lava flow contains pieces of the basalt, in, of, uh, basalt lava flow. These pieces, or inclusions, contained within the new rock are actually older than the rock that they're contained in. So that's an important way for us to help understand where things, you know, the, the, the age of things. A third important pr principle, or law, is that of cross-cutting relationships. Here we have three dikes, three igneous dikes, moving through uh, horizontally oriented flat sedimentary rocks. And when these dikes cut through, the sedimentary rock had to be there before they cut th before the dikes cut through, therefore the sedimentary rock is younger, or I mean, sorry, is older. So the, the intrusions that cross cut the rock must be younger than the rock itself. Okay, <clears throat> so now we've talked about the fact that older rocks lie beneath younger rocks. This, and you know, briefly, these are all sedimentary rocks from the valley. So these are the rock formations we have in our area. Uh, we're going to talk about where the high school is here in a moment, but um, Cambrian, Ordovician, Silurian, Devonian are, pri are the primary periods during which the rocks you find around this area were deposited. Now, most of them are Ordovician, especially here in the valley, they're mostly Ordovician. And then you go over into uh, uh, Burton, <clears throat> past the gap, and you get into the Silurian and eventually the Devonian rocks. But here, in, here at the high school, and these come from the Taconic Orogeny was, was an orogenic event. The Northern Appalachians were formed when uh, Europe collided and then the Acadian Orogeny. I'm sorry, I had that backwards. This is Africa colliding. This is Europe finishing the collision 250 million years ago. Anyway, um, this is part of a geologic map of the Broadway area that, where I, this symbol means it's where the high school is. So we have two rock types upon which the high school sits, the OMB and the OE. This is O stands for Ordovician, that's the age of the rock, period in which it was deposited. The E stands for Edinburgh Formation, yes, named after the town Edinburgh, up in my neck of the woods in Shenandoah County. And the MB stands for Martinsburg, Martinsburg Shale. Notice also the fault that goes right, to, uh, the faults that go right under the high school, two faults, in fact. This one's visible over here at the Klein Homestead. Um, and then there's a third fault over here. It's a pretty busy area, actually. Looking at it from a different perspective, this is the cross section. You'll learn about these. You'll be doing these here shortly. Um, this is where the high school is situ situated. There's the Martinsburg Shale. There's the Edinburgh Formation. This is a little further south from the high school, so there's over here there's Edinburgh and less shale. But bottom line is this is what the high school is sitting on top of is the Somsville Fault. It's flanked by the Martinsburg and Edinburgh formations, both Ordovician in age. So the rocks you're sitting on top of right now are either Edinburgh or Martinsburg. Both are Ordovician in age. Incidentally, there should also be another formation between them called the Oranda formation, but it appears to be missing at least in this location. Now, some practice. Which of these, put, place these letters in the proper order from oldest to youngest? Pause this now. Good, so you've, you determined that C, C was probably the oldest, followed by B, which is this, un, this uh, angular unconformity here, followed then by D, most likely, because A was probably put on top of D. D is probably a lava flow. Good. All right, try that again. Good, so you probably determined that in this case, B is the oldest, followed most likely by these faults, A and E. Oh, nope, sorry, nope, B was the oldest, followed by D, because D cuts across B, then E and A, and then finally C. 
Or C could technically be older than DNA. We don't really, we don't really know because they don't directly interact. Ah, no, ha ha ha, no, I'm all, I'm all wrong. So I'm completely messing you up, aren't I? Right answer, B is first, followed by C, because look, D cuts across C up here, which means that C must be older than D. Then there's D, and then finally A and E are formed. Okay, do this one on your own. Write it down, bring it into class next time, and that uh, will be your homework. Well, proof that you did your homework. Try this one as well. Now that you're a pro, put these things in order. Try this one out. All right, this one's just showing you the formation of an angular unconformity. So initially, you have flat-lying rocks, sediments, and then uh, they get they end up getting buckled by compressional forces from both sides, like mountain building forces, and then some of them get eroded. And eventually, more sediments deposit on top. So this is the order of oldest to youngest, A, D, B, C. Okay. Now that I've completely confused you, <laughs> hopefully not. Come on in next time. We'll talk about, we'll do some of these in class and really master them. Have a great day.